Good morning, everybody. So it was a it was a Monday morning, and I was taking a walk in a, a wooded area that was near a, a park near our house. And this is the Sunday after Pastor Trey was talking about the Lord's Prayer. We've been in the Lord's Prayer for the last month or so, maybe three weeks. And uh, I was curious, and I wanted to to dive deeper into these words. So I was slowly reading through the words as I was walking through the forest, right? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and then crunch I stepped on a piece of bread. I'm just kidding. I didn't step on a piece of bread, (laughs) but that would be legit if I stepped on a piece of bread. I said, because I was reading this out loud, give us this day our daily bread. But the moment that I read that, something in me said, stop. Stop. I read it again. Give us this day our daily bread. And it was like I was driving down the highway at 80 miles an hour. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a 20-foot red panda looking at me and waving hello. Like, I have to stop. I have to slam on the brakes like the Flintstones with the feet. Anybody know what that is? (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) Holy Spirit said, stay here a moment. There's something that I want to show you. Give us this day our daily bread. Not this month's bread, not this week's bread. Today. I needed to hear this. I needed to be reminded, my heart and my mind and my soul needed to be reminded of how I should trust God. Today. As you read scripture, Holy Spirit will draw your attention to people and to words and to phrases. And when he does, my encouragement to you is to pause there for a moment. Don't let it be a, you know, a Sunday sermon, that's good moment, and then move on. When there's something in you that says you need to stop on this, you listen and recognize that the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, is speaking to you and he has something to say. He has something that he wants to grow inside of you. So you take your time and you go slowly. There's a song lyric that that I just love and it's, it seems as though the slower I go, the faster I arrive. Take your time and go slowly and allow him to grow something in you, even if you get behind on your plan. Anybody like to be on plan and read every single day so that you don't get behind anybody like that? I know Sherry Bro is. It's just Enneagram 1, Enneagram 1. If if I get behind, it's not good. But even if you get behind on your plan, even if you don't get past the first paragraph and your goal is to read the first chapter, pause. Pause. And let Holy Spirit speak to you. Don't let a reading goal become uh, come before getting to know the Father more. About a year and a half ago, I got an Apple Watch. Anybody got an Apple Watch in the room? Okay, we got a few. Uh, and uh, man, it is, it is a, a wonderful piece of technology. And I use about 2% of it. <laughs> I, I use it just for alarms. So it is in a very expensive alarm clock is what it is. And so I, I'm setting alarms all day, every day. People, I mean, the kids in the house are like, you know, they're hearing this across the room, set alarm for this day, on this day, whatever. It's just because that's what I use it for. But I remember the day that I got the Apple Watch. And I remember the packaging. Anyone has, you know, opened an Apple product? You know what I'm talking about? The packaging is legit. And the way that you open 
the package is legit. It's so incredibly designed and perfect. And it's like a moment. There's videos all over the internet and on YouTube on unboxing things. It's ridiculous. Unboxing things like and, and people get excited. They get excited whenever they, you know, you you pull the little tab and then it starts unwrapping before you and like you don't have to do anything. That's what happened to me. I didn't video it though, and I didn't put it on the internet. I should have though. I pulled the tab and, uh, and the plastic started unwrapping before my eyes. I didn't have to do anything. I was like, dang, this is awesome. Now, I, I compare that to anybody, you know, open CDs before. Anyone know what CDs are? CDs, okay. The plastic on CDs is so dumb. And so, yes. Can I get a yes? Yeah. So it takes you so long to open the plastic to the CD. And then you have the little stickers, and when you try to open the plastic, it breaks in half, and you no longer have a case for your CDs. So you have to buy the, the case that holds all the CDs and, and all that, right? It's, it's so dumb. By the time that you get to the CD, the song is irrelevant. No longer on the radio, and it's gone. But with Apple, they've thought carefully about not just the product, they want it to be useful and delightful to use, but also the box that it comes in when you unwrap it, the whole experience, useful and delightful. Today, we're gonna unwrap this verse, Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread together. And, and my prayer is that as we pull the tab on the scripture, that the experience would be both useful and delightful. That God would surprise you with things that you didn't even think of. That he gives you a clear direction if that's what you need. That he reminds you of his promise. That Holy Spirit gives you a hug. Anybody in here need a hug? I just need a hug, yeah. And as we unpack this, I encourage you to take notes. We, we always encourage to take notes, right? Um, and I don't have any points in this sermon, so it makes it awesome for you, right? It's a pointless sermon. Uh, I have to say it every time. Uh, I don't have any points, but the point is I want you to create the points. I want Holy Spirit, whatever he's speaking to you, for you to jot that down. There is some paper that as you received, there's just a blank piece of paper. And if you don't have one, our worship post, if you don't mind having some ready for people, if you don't have some notes, just a blank piece of paper at the top, it says, what is God speaking to me? You can grab that. Or if you want to take notes on your phone, that's fine too. You can raise your hand if you need paper and pen, and our worship hosts will come around and give that to you. I don't want to, I don't want us to miss this. If you're not a note taker, try it. Try it today. And I want to, I want you to write in your own words what Holy Spirit is speaking to you, right? There, there are things that we remember and the things that we remember are the things that we write down in our own words, right? What Holy Spirit is, is speaking to you specifically. And the best notes are the ones that we create in our own words. If you're a visual person, I know Addison, I think she still does this. She draws pictures for notes. Anybody draw pictures for notes? I don't either. Uh, but she's, that's awesome. And for me, it's bullet points. Literally, this is just bullet points. And, and that's the way that I think, it's just bullet points. So however you want to take notes, if you want to draw strict figures, if you want to draw pictures, if you want to take bullet point notes, that's fine with me. The point is that Holy Spirit is speaking to you. There is a conversation going on right now. It's not a monologue. It is a dialogue, right? He is speaking to you. And we don't want to miss that. There's a, there's a melody inside of each of our hearts. And something is going to be said. Holy Spirit's going to speak to you and it's going to harmonize with that melody. And when it does, when it resonates in your heart and in your mind, you write it down. 
You don't have to write everything down, right? What harmonizes with the melody inside of your heart. I'm going to get to the, to the actual sermon here in just a little bit. Y'all hang with me, okay? Our brains, they're, uh, they're designed to make connections and associations. And when you write something in your own words, when you write it down and you let that moment sit for a little bit, your brain will actually remember what you wrote down, especially if you wrote it in your own words. Not my words, in your own words. And I'm not saying it's wrong to write down other people's words. I do it all the time. But then I write, what do I think about what I just wrote? Holy Spirit, what do you think about what I just wrote? You understand what I'm saying? And I don't want you to to worry about missing out either. Uh, These are recorded. You can go back and listen at any time. We have the sermons available on all kinds of platforms, and I'll get into that in a second. But during the week, as you write down notes, like the notes are pointless if you don't go back to them, right? If you don't review and reflect on the notes that God is speaking to you in this conversation, it can keep going. It doesn't have to stop today. The conversation can go on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and it can go deeper and it can go into all different places. I want you to ask Holy Spirit for clarity and more wisdom and more depth to the work that he's doing in you and what he spoke to you. What I do is I use my curiosity as a, as a compass to, disco- to discover and explore, like, God, what do you want to speak to me? today. This is what exactly happened whenever Pastor Trey had talked about the Lord's Prayer. And that Monday, I was curious. I was like, I I need to dive deeper into these words. I need to know more because they're drawing me. And I need to explore what you are saying here in these words. And as I did, Holy Spirit spoke to me. And that's what is coming out of this message right now. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. Now, earlier I did say that you can go back and and listen to the messages. Um, We have our messages on YouTube and we have them on the website and we also have them on the app. There's a little black card on or near your seat. You can download the app if you haven't gotten already. We do have the messages on there, but we also have them on Spotify and Apple Music. Does anyone listen to podcasts? Okay, we got a few people. Does anyone listen to Spotify? Are you Spotify? Anybody listen to Apple Music? Got a few people. All right. If you use Apple Music, I do want to let you know that it is okay. There is a red tent outside right now. It's called the Repent Tent. And you can go there. We have Spotify users who are ready to pray with you to help you transition from Apple Music to Spotify. In Jesus' name. If you're offended, it's okay. Let that sit for a little bit because love covers a multitude of sins. It does. Matthew 6 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Father, I thank you for the words that we're going to go over today. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that there is a conversation going on. You have so many conversations going on right now and that there's going to be something personal, something so incredibly insightful, something inspiring that you speak to these people and to to me as well. Help us to listen. Give us wisdom, a heart that hears. Help us to know what to write down and what to explore with you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I want to dive in to a few words inside of this one sentence, if that's all right with you guys, okay? Uh, The first word that I want to dive into is the very first word of the sentence, which is give. Give us this day our daily bread. Give. This translates to supply or furnish. And what are we saying? We're saying furnish our days with the things that we need. 
Furnish our days. Furnish can be defined as the be the source of. We ask God for lots of different things, right? But this word provides a whole new meaning. Anyone can give you bread. Anyone can go to the store and get you bread and give you bread, right? But this is more than a nice gesture. It's more than a handout. We are asking God to be the wellspring of our lives. God, give me peace becomes be the source of my peace. You hear the difference? God, give me joy today becomes be the wellspring of my joy. It is a completely different statement right here. God, give us this day our daily bread becomes God, become the source of our daily bread. The supplier that we constantly return to. Because he has a track record of providing the highest quality product, delivered right when we need it. Better than Amazon Prime, same day delivery, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I was in the living room one morning, and usually every morning, I plug in my AirPods and my phone to charge, uh, and my watch too. And so it was a regular morning. I was doing my thing, and and usually I like to listen to a podcast or a YouTube video uh, as I'm making my breakfast tacos. Y'all remember the breakfast tacos? It was a couple months ago that I talked about that, but I'm not going to get into it this time because it was too much last time. Uh, So I I like to listen to something. So I charged my AirPods, and uh, it was a couple hours later, and I was ready to make some breakfast, and I go to get my AirPods. I open the case. Pull out the AirPods, put it in my ears, and I hear, do, 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 Yes, y'all know what that, do, 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 do. That sound is no good. When I need the AirPods, I hear, do, 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 which means there's no, there's no charge, or it's almost dead, right? So they weren't charging the whole time. So I go back to the case, because I didn't unplug the case. I go back to the case, and I'm looking at the case, and I'm looking at the cord, and I'm looking at the cord that's plugged into the case, and my mind is broken. I don't know why it's not charging, right? So I follow the cord to the extension cord. Y'all know where this is going. And I follow the extension cord all the way to the outlet. There it was, lying on the ground, not in the outlet. (laughs) I'm sure one of my kids unplugged it to plug in the switch. And I didn't, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize that it wasn't plugged in. I just plugged into the source that was near me, the actual plug. I plugged into a source, but I didn't plug into the source. For my daily bread, I don't want to plug into a source, especially if it's not plugged in. I want to plug into the source. Give us this day our daily bread. Become the source of my daily bread. And then I looked at the word us. Give us. Like, when's the last time you said us when you were just praying, right? This is not a multi-personality thing of me, myself, and I. Uh, This is a reason, there's a a purpose behind these words of us and our, when we're with others or we're praying for other people, right? Give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread. We're believing God to be the source of not just ourselves, but the people that we love, our neighbors, the people that are in the grocery store. Give us this day, our daily bread. Ask God for daily bread with your family, together, together or with your friends together. Believe God for the daily provisions and talk about how he showed up that day while you eat the miracle that he provided for you. And then I moved on to to this day. Now, this day, when I looked up the definition of this day, it blew my mind. It was crazy, it was crazy. 
I went to the computer and I went to Blue Letter Bible, Blue Letter Bible, I think that's what it is. And I, and I looked it up, this verse, Matthew 6, 11. I clicked on the word so that I could dive into the meaning of this word. And it translates to this day. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to me too. However, like, I mean, for me, like if I, if I feel God is drawing me to a word, sometimes I'll, I'll look it up and to see what does it actually mean? Because sometimes it's completely different, right? Than our translation the, or whatever I'm reading. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be insightful. This is going to be good. And then it's the same exact thing, same exact thing. But this communicates to me that God wants to be or wants us to focus on a time frame, on today. Give us this day our daily bread. Not for the next week or month. No, give us this 24 hours worth of bread. It's a humbling two words. This day. God wants us to get in the habit of trusting him daily. He doesn't want us to believe for miracles every once in a while or monthly or even weekly, right? He wants us to believe in him as the source of our peace every single day, as the source of our joy every single day, as the source of our healing every single day. We're asking God to be the source of the next 24 hours, of the next 1,444 minutes of the day. Be my source. We learn to trust God with days so that we can trust him with decades. I can't trust him for the next decade if I can't trust him right now. How can I? And I continue to move on to the word daily. This word is only found in Matthew 6, 11 and Luke 3. And it translates to the bread of our necessity. What's necessary for us. Give us this day our daily bread. We're not asking for anything more than today's needs. If you're a planner, that's hard. <laughs> And, and God wants us to plan. He wants us to be wise. There are tons of scriptures supporting thinking long-term and planning. But as far as trusting him, we don't just trust him 10 years from now. We trust him every single day. This isn't a, a trip to Costco. Buy in bulk, right? It says supply with me. I mean supply with me. Supply me with uh, what's necessary for me and my family today, right now, in this moment. If we just have what we need for today, we have the opportunity to trust God for tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And it reminded me of uh, Moses and the Israelites. About a month after leaving Egypt, uh, Moses and the Israelites journeyed into the wilderness of sin. Uh, and this is not sin like we think of. It's an actual place, sin, capital S. Um, and they started complaining to Aaron and Moses how they would rather have died <laughs> in Egypt than be stuck in the wilderness starving to death. There, they had pots full of meat and all the bread that they wanted. But they were in chains. They were in bondage. And they'd rather die in chains than be free and trust God for their next meal. So what happens? God told Moses that he was going to rain down food for them. And each day, the families could go pick up the food that they needed for that day. For that day, if you're starving and you finally get food, are you going to pick up food just for that day? <laughs> no. No, your, your natural instinct is to save what you've got and even, you know, pick up for the next week or whatever as much as you can. I don't know when my next meal is going to be, so I need to save. 
Now, the next morning, the ground was wet with dew. And when the dew evaporated, it turned into like a, a flaky substance. The only thing when I read that was I, I thought of frosted flakes. I don't know why. Frosted flakes all over the ground. I'm going to take a sip real quick. Now, the Israelites, they had no idea what it was. They were looking around at, I mean, they knew what dew was, but what is this flaky substance? What is that? But Moses knew exactly what it was. It was the bread from God. He told him he was going to provide bread in the morning and quail in the evening, right? Moses recognized God's provision. When we trust God, and we live a life of trusting God every single day, you'll end up recognizing the bread that he provides, even if it doesn't come in the way that you thought it was going to come. God will open up your eyes to see his hand in your life. So God told them. He was very clear on instructions to pick up about two liters of the frosted flakes, right? No milk provided. Uh for each person in their tent. And they were specifically told not to keep any of it for the morning. How hard would that be if I, if I didn't know? But we gotta understand, if you're not trusting God, that's the way that you think. If you don't believe that he's gonna provide the next meal, then I need to go in my own power and my own strength and find the meal for my family. I've got kids to feed. So I gotta do what I gotta do, right? Here's what happened. Some people didn't listen. <laughs> they didn't listen. By the morning, the bread was full of maggots and smelled like three-day-old eggs and mayonnaise. That's what the Bible says, three-day-old eggs and mayonnaise. Greg paraphrased, yeah. Hmm. Huh. Anybody can eat that? No. Nasty. When we believe or live believing that it's only up to us to be the provider, we end up holding on to things of the past. Sometimes God doesn't want to bless yesterday's manna. He wants to provide something new for you for today. His mercies and his manna are new every morning. And we'll miss today's miracle if we're trying to save yesterday's manna. Back in the, in the park, when I was walking, and I read the scripture, give us this day our daily bread, I realized in that moment, for too long, that I've been striving. Living as if it was only up to me. Trying to save today's manna for tomorrow. It can be easy because we have so many videos and information on how to save, how to prepare for the future. But all along, God has had new manna for me for the next day. What do I need to do? I simply need to trust him. And this, this could be anything in our lives that we're trying to hold on to because we don't know when something else will come along. A job. I've been in this job for a while and I need to stay here because I don't know if something else is going to come along. That, that mentality of trying to save because I don't know when something else is going to come along, that, that's going along an orphan mindset. When God has called you to be a son or a daughter, he's going to provide for you. He's got you covered.
In this moment, I want you to close your eyes and uh, just hear me for a moment. If you are like me, have been striving too long. If you're tired of striving and you're ready to live in the sonship and daughtership, if that's a word, if you're ready to live free, if you're ready to be done with the chains, even though there's pots full of meat and all the bread and butter that you could have, if you want to live trusting God every single day, give us this day our daily bread. I want you to do something for me. I want you to stand up if that's you and you're ready to trust God every single day. And you can keep your eyes closed. If you're ready to stop striving, if you're ready to cease, if you're ready to be still and know that he is God. This isn't in my notes, but a scripture that keeps just getting me every single time is that we need to stop. Do not weary yourself with the overwhelming desire to gain wealth. Cease from your own understanding of it. Do not weary yourself with the overwhelming desire to gain whatever it is that you're going after. Stop. Holy Spirit says, stop. I got you. Yes, of course I want you to plan, but do not let that be something that gets you exhausted. Don't let it be something that gets you tired and you're just obsessed with this thing. God says, I've got it. I've got tomorrow's manna waiting for you and it's new and it's fresh and it doesn't have maggots and old mayonnaise in it. I've got it for you. If you're standing, I want you to, to put your hands out and, and hold a tight fist. as tight as you can hold that fist because that is exactly what we're doing right now. We can't let go because we don't know where the next meal is coming from. We can't let go. We don't know where that next promotion is coming from, where the next whatever it is that you're believing for is coming from. And so you hold on. You hold on because that's what you can control. You hold on because that's something that you can do in your power. But God is saying, let me do something in my power now. In this moment, I want you to take your hands and I want you to release control, loosen your grip and open your hands. Father, we choose today to trust you to be the source of everything that we need. You are the bread of life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for removing the need to strive and teach us to quietly wait on you. And wait on you every day when we wake up. to trust in your word, to trust your voice, to walk in faith every day, knowing that the maker of the manna is guiding and providing for you. Today, we choose as our source of peace and joy and healing. Our source of parenting, our source of creativity, 
our source of thinking. We choose you. We choose the provider of the daily bread. We choose the provider of the manna. In Jesus' name, amen. And I wanted to provide an opportunity as well. Uh, if in the same position, if you're holding on to your life, I was for a while before I gave my life to Jesus. I didn't know what would, what would happen if, if I gave my life to Jesus. I literally thought that I would have to give up something most precious to me in order to serve and follow him. But I was completely backwards. He took what I, what I thought I was going to have to give up and he completely exploded it in a new way that I never would have thought of. I never would have thought when I gave my life to him because he put the desire in me anyways. I know that all the eyes are open right now, but it's okay. If you are wanting to give your life to Jesus today, if you want to say, you know what? I've been holding on to my life because I want control, because this is how I can handle it. This is how I maintain control. If you're ready to say, you know what? You can have it. If you're ready, I want you to lift up your hand for me. Yep, I see those hands. Yes, that hand. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes, keep your hands up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If everyone can repeat after me. Father, Father I know that I'm messed up. I know that I messed up. And I've been holding too tightly. And I've been holding too tightly. But today, but today, I release my hands. I release my hands. I release my grip. My grip. I give it to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died on the cross and rose from the grave. And rose from the grave. And are seated in heaven. And are seated in heaven. And one day you're coming back. And one day you're coming back. Until then. Until then. I serve you wholeheartedly. I serve you wholeheartedly. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's celebrate those who just gave their life to Jesus. Come on, church. If you just gave your heart to Jesus, I want you to know that there's a QR code we would love for you to scan. We want to do this journey with you. Can I get everyone just to stand to your feet? I have one thing I've got to tell you today. I, I don't know if you remember uh, last week I told you how the Pope in 2019 tried to change or wanted to change the Lord's Prayer. There was a, a line. As Greg was talking, I thought, what would Trey's version of the Lord's Prayer be? And uh, the only thing I would, I would tweak in it, but I'm not. It's the Lord's Prayer. It's not Trey's prayer. It would be, give us this day our daily tacos. Give us this day our daily tacos. Am I right? Am I right? Speaking of tacos, Carrie and I are going to go have lunch at Taco Palenque. It's by Walmart and Chick-fil-A. And it's kind of, you walk in, you order your food, you sit down at a table, and there is an unlimited salsa bar. If anyone in the church has had a hard time building connections or relationships, we're just all about community. We would love to see you there. Uh, I'm not paying for your lunch, unfortunately. But I will eat with you, and we'll say hi, and we would love to chat over at Taco Palenque. Service is over, but church is not. Now that you've been to church, go be the church. God bless you.